Hi boys and girls! Today we're going to start our first day of our Square One Art Fundraiser. Square One is a program that we do every year where you create a work of art and we send it away to the company Square One. They can then put your artwork on all sorts of things that you can purchase, such as cell phone cases, t-shirts, pillowcases, book bags, coffee mugs, and so much more. Let's get started. For Square One this year, we're going to be inspired by American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe was born in the state of Wisconsin and lived to be 98 years old. She was known for painting beautiful paintings of landscapes, nature, and most particularly flowers. Her flower paintings are what made her the most famous. People love her flower paintings because of how realistic they are, the bright exotic colors that she used, and how you feel like you are right inside of these paintings because she paints them so up So close. what you're going to need is your square one paper, a pencil, and I'm going to be using a sharpie just because it's easier for you all to see. But I want you to begin drawing your flower with a pencil. Now, I like to start from the inside of my flower and then working my way towards the outside. So what I do is I very carefully observe and look very closely at the picture of the flower that I'm using. For this particular flower, I found a Google image of my favorite flower, the dahlia. I like to start in the middle or the center of my flower and work my way out towards the edges because I think that's how you can get the most realistic flower. I really take my time on this, so excuse me while I go slow because I really am taking my time looking back and forth at the photo of the flower as well as my drawing of the flower. The best advice I can give to you is when you're drawing something that you're looking at is to take your time and really, really look at the lines and the shapes that make up the object. So for this particular flower, there's lots of curved lines that come to a point that make up all the petals. I'm going to speed this up for you and I'll check back in with you when I'm finished. Alright, since you did your drawing in pencil, now would be your time to use a Sharpie marker to trace over your pencil lines. I'm then going to grab a fine tip Sharpie with a very small point and I'm going to use this to use some curved lines inside of my petals and just make them really close together and kind of go up and down back and forth. The reason I do this is because you can already tell that the petal is now looking a little bit more three-dimensional, more realistic, and it's giving the petal some shadows. Typically, you may want to add shadows with a pencil, but by using the Sharpie, we can make really short, quick little lines that are very tiny and close to each other to give the illusion of a shadow. The closer you put them together, the darker it will look. All right, I'm going to finish the rest of my flower and I will check back in with you. As I put my last finishing touches on and add in my last few lines, it's important to remember that your flower does not have to be perfect. When Georgia O'Keeffe painted her flower paintings, she made sure that they looked like the actual flower, but she also put her own spin on things too. Don't stress out if it's not exactly like the flower that you looked at in the photo. All right, here comes my favorite part of all. We are going to add color to our flower using markers and we're going to turn our markers into watercolor paint. Now, I know that many of you at home with us do not have watercolor paint, so this is a really fun, easy technique 
to take your normal Crayola markers and turn them into watercolor paints. So what I'm doing right now is I kind of chose the colors that I wanted to make my flower. I chose purples, pinks, reds, oranges, and yellows. I wanted to make it more of warm color. So what I'm doing is I'm tracing over my Sharpie lines. I'm kind of giving my petals an outline of color. All right, so I used a, the light purple lavender color there, and I'm using a little bit of red to kind of go inside the petals to give it a little bit of a shadow. Then I'm going to do some of the outside petals with my orange. And I want my lines to be nice and thick. Okay, notice how I'm using kind of the side of my marker to give my petals a nice thick line. The thicker the line, the more color that's going to spread when we start to paint this. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow on these lines too to thicken up the lines a little bit and then add another little pop of color in there. Perfect. And I'm picking colors that I just think are going to look really good together. It does not have to look exactly like the flower that you saw or drew from a photo. You can choose colors that you like and that you think will look the best. Remember, these colors do not have to be exactly like the flower looks in real life. They can be something that makes you feel happy, make colors that you choose your flower to be. They don't have to be realistic. So normally I would finish the entire page with my markers, but I wanted to pop in really quick to show you how we're going to turn these into watercolor paints. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to get it really wet in the water here. Okay, get my paintbrush super wet. Tap off any extra water and I'm going to carefully just keep inside one petal at a time and trace over the marker lines and kind of drag it to the center of the petal where it is white. What's going to happen, it's going to kind of loosen up that marker and turn the marker into a watercolor paint. Don't worry if it doesn't work right away. Sometimes it takes a few minutes, especially for certain colors, to kind of make the magic happen. They kind of take a couple minutes to spread towards the middle. Let's zoom in here to get a closer look. Much better. Notice how some of the colors have already started to blend and blend towards the white part of the petal. This is what makes it look like watercolor paint. All right, now I'm going to speed some things up so that you can see my finished product. As I put on my last few finishing touches and finish the last couple petals, notice how in the center of the flower where we began, how the water has already spread the marker so much more than when we started. The longer the water sits on the paper, the more the marker will spread to start making it look like watercolor paint. All right, and there you have it, my finished Georgia O'Keeffe inspired flower drawing. Hope you guys have fun doing this. Can't wait to see them.